In this tutorial, we will create this new classical module building from Quixel Megascans. At the end of it, we should have our building uh, like this, and we will be able to change the size of it, and it should uh, dynamically change the roofs and the all the sizes of it like that. And at the end of the tutorial, I'm also, also going to send it to the uh, Unreal to get some beauty shots of it like that. So. There's a lot to cover. Let's let's get started. Let's start by making sure that we have installed our Megascans plugin correctly. So once you install it, there should be a drop-down menu on top of it, inside here. And I just leave it at that. And if you have problems exporting to the Houdini uh, by the app, once you have installed this, go ahead and try to open up this menu and close it down. And usually that works for me. So. I already tested it, it works for me, so let's go to the bridge app, Quixel Bridge, and I found this building, which is, which has all these module pieces, and we're gonna try to recreate this building inside Houdini. So, first of all, let's start by getting our geometry inside it. So, it's very useful for us that there's a basically a kit already set up for us. You can see there's a ground floor, first floor, second, third floor, uh, the trim which is on top of the third floor and there's uh, buildings there's some of them are actually repeating basically you can see this building uh, this single window is actually part of this uh, third floor kit so I'm just gonna download the kits and then we're gonna just uh, split all of it inside Houdini and then there's a cable and all the roofs and all that so let's start by getting one ground floor kit and I'm just going to press on export. And if it's correctly all set up, let's minimize it. You can see we have gotten our geometry inside Houdini. And let's go inside it. So first of all, there's already a problem because uh, these blast nodes actually it puts a group type when it blasts by the name of the uh, pieces because it basically imports all the pieces at once and then just blasts them. And they actually are the wrong group type, so just select all of these and put them to the primitives like that. So now we have separate pieces for each one of these null nodes. And now let's go to the top menu of the object level. Let's create a geometry container. Let's call it a mega scans building. Let's go inside it and let's put down object merge. So in this object merge, you want to basically reference all of these pieces. So we could do it uh, without any, basically the slow way, which is just to select these, make sure that you select this and select these all by themselves. So we could do that, but there's a couple of ways if you have my toolkit that we can easily import it. So for first of all, I'm going to show the one way to do it with, if you have installed my toolkit, I'm just going to select all of these nodes, I'm going to go ahead Press on, uh, press on object merge, go to my tools kit, and you can see object merge, select the nodes, and I'm going to uh, basically, by default, there's already one selection, and if you want to clean it, selection, basically uh, as a new node, we can just control click on object merge, select nodes, like that. You can see it's basically going to import all of them inside it, like that. And then we can just make three copies, and then make sure we have one, inside this let's leave it to leave this so now we have all three of them like that so this is one way we can do it or if you have the newest version of my toolkit we can actually import this uh, geometry node and then split them just like inside here automatically so i'm going to delete them all of them so let's put down a object merge and let's import only this node so i'm going to go ahead inside here like this so now we have Im imported uh, basically all of these three from this null node and now i'm going to just click on it i'm going to go to my toolkit and it's split by unique attribute string and it should open up this menu and you can see for the names there are three unique names P press accept and you can see it has basically done the same thing as inside here it has, is it has uh, split them up so actually i'm going to actually probably use this one it looks a little bit nicer so so these names are pretty pretty long 
so we can uh, make them a little bit a uh, little bit shorter but by default it should uh, basically put the name of the attribute of uh, a node name should be the name of the uh, name of the uh, uh, unique string of the uh, name attribute or whatever attribute you split by so this kind of a quick so thing these names are really long so yeah that's that so I'm going to just leave them at that and one thing more is actually this uh, ground floor uh, ground floor building floor kit doesn't actually has the corners so all the rest of them actually has corners so you want to also basically the corners are a separate import so let's export also corners for the ground floor so so that's that actually i'm going to uh right so i'm going to delete this actually i'm going to import on this uh, import node also my corners so let's go to the corner kit right here so this is the select the uh, select the null node go inside here i'm going to object merge select the node so basically now we have corners and this inside it i'm going to again uh i'm going to split by unique as a string as you put like that so that's it so now we have basically imported two and all of them should have a unique name and we have also imported corners of our ground floor so that's exactly what i wanted to do so now let's start by ma by making some uh our ground floor so what i'm going to do is actually start by giving it, uh, all of these pieces a name because we have to give it a unique name that we can reference inside the uh, building generator node so let's put down attribute create and this is going to be our st our string attribute so the so the class is going to be primitive the type is going to be string and now i want to give uh, give it the all of these a name so for my naming scheme i'm, I'm i did so i'm going to do uh, something like this so i'm going to give first of all give it the floor going to be floor zero underscore and these are going to be doors door underscore zero so if we have multiple doors or multiple windows we have index for each one of them so and then we can just start copying so this is window so these two is going to be a windows so i'm just going to instead of uh, door window copy it and it's going to be window one like that so this is a this is basically just a wall so we can use this as a extension between the windows like that so we want, if we want more space between the windows and all that so i'm just going to call it the wall so this is going to be a wall and it's going to be wall zero so this is going to be corner we're going to call it a uh, let's call it a corner convex and this is going to be corner concave so this is a convex and this is a concave corner so this is what you want to a copy so now we have our attribute set up but one thing more we want to do is to actually uh actually let's do that later let's just see the problem and then let's see the solution of it and also I want to rename it so I actually forgot the name of it so what you can do is actually select all of these and put the name as a attribute as a name so you can see if the node is the same type it's actually going to update all of them inside it so put it the name so it should actually now uh, override the name of the import name and out the name of the that we actually imported by by blast by so like that and now let's merge all of these together by all clicking so and now let's put down a for each node for each name primitive and by default it should already pick up our name attribute so we have to position the geometry very in a very specific way so put down a transform node and then transform node uh, rotate it by 90 degrees on y-axis now put down a match size node and you want to basically make uh, make this all of this geometry on a positive uh, z-axis so basically want to 
uh, move it all the way there so justify y to min and justify z by min also so basically we have moved it all the way to the positive z axis so it's because this is the pivot that's actually going to be copied to and now for the last thing that we're going to do is actually put down a building so go ahead and search for the building generator tools inside labs toolkit and there should be generator utility we have to set up all of these pieces of geometry as a building generator uh, with this base building generator utility so first of all put down the auto dimensions so it picks up the width and the length of the length of the each each piece that we are looping over and one thing more we want to do is actually give it a name and the name of this um, module for each on module is actually going to be the name attribute of this like that so just go ahead and input the generator put in a backticks put down a prims so prims is for the string attributes put down a zero for this geometry put down zero for the basically for the geometry primitive number and it doesn't really matter the primitive number uh, it's going to be zero because all of them are the same for that each it uh, loops over and the attribute name is name and that's it you can close the backticks like that and you can see it's going to pick up the name of it and at the end of the loop we should have set up our building modules and be ready to be copied over uh, to the building module uh, by pattern so that's that let's put down a building uh, uh, a lab building from patterns like that and want to put this in a, as a, a second input like that and what we'll do is get some geometry as a test test out a block of geometry i'm just going to put down a box and connect it as a first and for our building we have to make it a little bit bigger maybe something like this let's move it out of the out of the negative something like this so we have our uh, modules set up so these are our modules and yeah, now we want to actually create some patterns so go ahead to the building from patterns make sure that you uh, turn on pack and instance geometry so make it a little bit, uh, actually a lot faster and in our pattern you can see there is by default there's a generic pattern which is actually the pattern of the built-in uh, modules built modules of just a basic grids like that so but we want to create our own uh, our own patterns so go ahead to the our loop and just copy this building from generator utility disconnect it and we have to first of all feed some geometries that's going to actually hold information about our patterns so i'm just going to ins go inside this hda and copy this uh, copy this grid paste it and connect it inside here and instead of uh, this is not a building module it's actually going to be a floor description so the name of it is going to be a uh, ground floor so we want to give it a expanded uh, form and this is basically where we actually have to give a name of our modules that we gave it inside here and that is actually going to uh, describe our floor uh, but before that actually we want to give it also a very important thing is to give it a uh, module dimensions so the so the width of it can be zero but the height of it is very important and that's going to be height of our modules that we have our ground floor and since these are all from the kit they should be the same if you go to the our loop end you can see it actually has given a attribute of the module dimensions uh, module dimensions uh, x and y so the width of it is going to be uh, varying because we have different pieces of geometry but the height of it should always be 3.5 there's you can see there's a little bit of a rounding but we can safely use 3.5 as a height of it of our ground floor and now we have to enable this expanded form and we have to give it a pattern of our modules you can see there's a there's already a couple of uh, syntax for our reference and there's really uh, what to do is basically a repeated fill repeated you can see by these arrow brackets we can just give it a module name and this this is a for a for this example and it's going to fill it as much as it can 
So just just going to fill it with uh, once you start using it, it actually makes really makes sense. So I'm just going to copy our name of our doors, and I'm just going to fill it, uh, fill our uh, ground floor with uh, doors, and that's it. I just copy the module name. So actually, let's copy it inside here. Let's merge all of these together. So we have to feed all of these uh, our floor descriptions, also our modules, to the uh, building from patterns node. So merge them and go to the building from patterns, show floors. And if we have done it correctly, make sure that this is enabled. And if we have done it correctly, it, our ground floor should appear inside here. You can copy it instead of a generic uh, built-in uh, pattern. You can delete it and paste it our ground floor like that. And with a little bit of luck, it should actually go ahead and copy them. Let's make our box 3.5 meters long uh, height so that we have one uh, one floor like that. You can see with this pattern, which is our uh, basically uh, arrow uh, bracket, it's basically going to just repeat them uh, on all of the or in all of the walls. You can go ahead and do. You can see it's automatically going to. Uh, rearrange them so this is very nice this is a good beginning but there's a couple of problems first of all this pattern is not very great and also we have no corners we have to set up our corners so let's do that so let's go back to our pattern and let's work on this pattern so first of all i want to make sure that we have only one uh, door each side of this building so we want to make sure that we are actually enclosing this uh, door uh, module inside the uh, square brackets. This is a rigid uh, finite number of them. So I just worked one. So I'm just gonna put them inside the square brackets. And this is uh, so make sure that whatever your pattern you're making, it actually uh, is uh, possible to actually fill all of the all of it uh, inside the building uh, from pattern generator because right now it's not actually possible to. Uh, from our patterns to fill all of the win all of the walls uh, because if we because our wall uh, length can be uh, dynamic so make sure that we actually uh, want to fill these all of these with the uh, with our doors and the, not doors but with the windows so we have two windows we have window one and two so I'm just going to use uh, I want all of the windows also the same so I'm just going to copy windows let's go inside here I just want to uh, basically populate both sides of our doors with uh, just as many as the patterns need uh, windows like that and if you go back to it you can see our pattern is always windows and at the middle of it we have one uh, door if i go to inside here play with it you can see it's always going to try to uh, fill it you can see the now we have four uh, windows two on both sides if i make it smaller you can see our doors are still inside here and starts to uh, cut off the pattern at the end of it. But it's also going to also always going to try to uh, uh, the uh, leave the doors. So this is basically exactly what I want. So maybe something like that at the middle of it, like that. So this looks actually pretty good. For our corners, we actually going to have to do a little bit of a, a more setup. For our corners, we're actually going to have to do a little more of a setup because you can see in our building generator, there is actually an option for our corners. So let's say I want to my corners to be these uh, concave, convex corners. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it inside. So let's look at our pattern. Let's go to the corner. Let's go ahead and paste it inside it. So you can see it has pasted this one, but you can see it's not really working. Because our corner is actually, uh, our corner is basically the, uh, our pattern wants to copy our corner at the both sides. And then they are like, a, they should like a, be together like that. But uh, this is not really going to work because our corner is actually just a single corner. We should only have one copy of it at each corner. So this is actually a, a problem for us. So... What we're going to do is actually go ahead and not we're going not to have to use this uh, corners uh, parameter and this second parameter. So I played around with this 
I placed inside here and nothing really happened. So I first thought maybe it is for the concave and convex corners. Then I modified this box and it didn't really do anything. So I'm really not going to use these corners. I'm actually going to use uh, only this uh, pattern and just put our corners at the both sides uh, as a, in a square brackets. But for that to actually work, we have to uh, get our points. So there are a couple of outputs of it. So let's put a null node. Let's call it a geo out. So this is actually a instanced a geometry already instance on point. Copy. Uh, let's call it points out. And this is actually uh, only the point of the uh, geometry. Uh, not third one. Second one. You can see, this is actually just the point that we can actually copy to. So basically, what the what we are going to do is modify these points, and then we are going to uh, copy to these points our patterns again so this is a uh, this is what we are going to use actually to get uh, our model to the unreal as an instance geometry uh, but actually we can also work with instance uh, points also inside houdini so put down a copy to points put down a copy to points to copy to these and actually our uh, let's move maybe something like this and just move our merge geometry inside here Actually, we probably don't even need our patterns. We can just uh, just move our geometry inside here like that. And I did one problem. I did one uh, wrong thing. First of all, piece attribute is mo uh, module name a name like that. And that's it. We should actually now be basically getting the same pattern as we are getting outside of. Uh, as a geometry we should getting also the same as inside here and also make sure that you are instanced also this geometry and this is good because we can actually now go ahead and modify these points and then copy it too so what we'll do is actually uh, go back to our pattern and actually uh, copy uh, both two geometry we basically we want to add both sides of it a uh, dummy geometry that we actually going to uh, delete too so let's go to our patterns, our modules. And what I want to do is, so what's nice about these are actually the tower corners. So this is our con convex and con concave corner. So now we are only uh, worried about the convex corners. So our convex corners is this one. And uh, so let's take a look at our wall and our wall, basically our uh, basic wall, like this one, you can see that this wall has actually basically the uh, same dimensions as it's it's aligned to this one. Uh, it's also aligned to this one. So what we're going to do is actually make copies of our uh, single wall, zero. Uh, these are going to be a, a temporary wall, temporary wall that we're actually going to delete. So let's make sure we have a little bit of space find and just uh, copy these twice. I'm just going to color them as a Maybe something like a red, because this actually could be our temporary, uh, temporary uh, copy to points geometry. I'm just going to call it a uh, floor zero corner, uh, corner uh, delete. So this is going to be geometry that we're going to delete, and this is going to be geometry that we're going to be. Uh, I just call it a temp, temporary geometry that we're going to replace with our corner, uh, with our con convex corner like that just uh, take these together type them in and let's copy our delete let's go to our uh, building generator let's put these uh, inside here so square brackets put down a delete first so this is basically just so that we can and instead of that uh, and attend not the delete uh, use a temp so the geometry is going to be the same. So let's take a look at it. There should be now two pieces of geometry at the both sides. So we did uh, make create them two because we want to separate, basically want to delete one of them. And then we want to copy to uh, that one. Uh, we want to copy to the other one because we do not need uh, two corners because our corner is con complete corner and we do not need uh, two of them on the both sides. So we have copied. This looks good. 
now I want to do some wrangling. So put down the wrangle node. And I want to find it by the module name. So the module name was the corner delete. We want to delete this. We can actually put down the blast. Let's delete these points that we do not need. So add a module name equals a F0 corner delete like that. So and it should delete the non selected. So we have a 28 points after the blast. We have 24. That should be correct. So you can copy this. And now in our angle, we want to rename our uh, our corner uh, temporary to the uh, corner convex to this name. So that we copy that too. So go inside wrangle. So let's get our string. So let's go to the since these are actually uh, so this should be only we have only points outside of here. So these are all points. So make sure that you run over the points, and in blast make sure it's, it's points. So string, let's call it the module equals uh, s at module name. So and if if so the module name equals so the module name that we want to do is f corner temp and then in the in the round bracket we want to basically rename it to the s at uh, module name equals f0 so we want to give it our corner name our uh, complete corner f0 uh, corner convex and that should be done so now we should basically all the we have renamed our uh, corner temporary corner to the convex and once it once we go to the copy the point it's not going to pick up our temporary corner which is just a single wall which is just this geometry is actually going to pick up uh, our convex corner so let's take a look at it and you can see it actually looks it works really nicely we have created our corner of our geometry like that and we can go go ahead and play with it you can see it's always going to be our corner working so that said we have fixed our corners and we have to expand all of this to the uh, to all of our uh, floors so now let's go ahead and start importing more geometry so Let's do some little bit of a cleanup. So first of all, I'm actually going to go ahead and put this all inside a network box. Inside a, what's it actually called? Create network box. Okay, so I'm going to call it ground floor. And maybe let's give it something more of a... Something... Maybe what color could I give it? Something not very intensive actually like this one okay so let's go ahead and actually let's just copy this import merge and let's go ahead on on top of our network so first of all this is our ground floor we can actually let's let's delete this let's do a little bit of a cleanup here ground floor ground floor corner something like this and now let's go ahead to our app and let's get our second floor, first floor, second and the third. So let's import all of them. Let's work on these. Like that. So here we have our floors, our three floors. So let's... Actually, let's keep the... I'm just going to first, second floor kit, and third floor kit. I'm just going to leave it at that. Now let's start importing. So let's go to the first floor, go to this one, go to our uh, node, and I'm just going to merge it by uh, by control clicking on it. So basically, we're going to override them like that. So this is going to be our uh, 
uh, first floor. This is going to be our second floor. So let's go to our second floor. Let's import it. Input merge selected. This is our second floor. And let's our third floor. And let's go to our third floor. And let's select object merge selected. Not uh, like that. So we have got our floors. And let's start by expanding all of these. So I'm going to have to be a little bit more of space. And so let's. I'm going to use my tools. Let's go split by unique attribute by name. Like that. And now we have basically got the same thing. And let's. The other things you can probably guess what we're going to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead. I'm going to lay this all out. So I did the import. So let's take a look at it. So basically it's the same setup as our uh, ground floor. So now just take these uh, merge nodes. Just merge them together. Take them and connect them to our uh, for each. Uh, actually let's do this like that. So we have our merge inside here. Let's collect all of these merges. And let's merge them together in one merge and then we connect this to inside here so we have now 26 geometry pieces and our pattern should still work just the same so now i want to start working with our uh, with our building so let's copy let's set up our second floor so I'm just gonna copy this one our pattern uh, our ground pattern let's call it a uh, first floor Uh, and for the first floor we basically can just uh, the naming scheme I set up is the same I just have to I can just start by uh, increasing them to F1 uh, actually uh, so we do not have a so we have window we don't have a doors so so I want to make sure that we have only uh, we only repeat the window zero and for the corners we can and we have corners also the setup is the same it's going to be our first floor and what's cool about this you can actually select it and if you uh, mouse wheel up you can see it's basically automatically increases so let's do f1 like that so and let's see how i think the corner height is actually uh, different uh, let's look a little bit on the right so corner height is actually three point that's gonna be i guess so one two three it's gonna be three and a half okay the corner height is still three and a half so this is one thing that we do have to make sure that we have it correctly set up so okay it's actually should already work so copy our uh, first floor go to the building pattern uh, show floors and sit so for this ground floor we want to now make so since we want to only one make it one put it in a square bracket and in angle bracket is going to be our new floor which is going to be first floor so basically any any if the box is uh, higher than the uh, certain amount is going to keep copying the first floor so let's take a look at it let's go ahead to our box so since our box is uh, right at the 3.5 it's actually not going to start copy it's not going to start copy our second floor but if you go to our box and go go above the uh, floor height so basically 3.5 plus 3.5 it should be seven so let's put it at seven uh like that you can see it's now it copies actually the uh it copies the uh, our first floor and it is important to make sure that it, somewhere in your pattern is actually uh these uh angle brackets because if i put it on a, a ground uh, at the at the angle because it's because it's actually starts it's because let's say i start to increase our pattern set here it starts to make our third floor in our pattern is actually since square brackets always create only one thing there isn't anything that's going to actually there won't be an information on what what to make a, a second floor of that so make sure that there are at least one of these so that's good 
let's go back back at the seven like that and let's make our corners so our corners will be the same as inside here so actually the corners are actually should be printed on right we have our printed on corners and we have our corner set up so in our wrangle only thing we need to do is go ahead and copy this if paste it and instead of one anywhere where it's uh, one make, make it at the zero to the one and since our naming is the same it should actually work very nicely and it actually let's take a look at it uh it should uh, oh okay yeah we have a problem because our delete is not actually our delete is only deleting uh first floor so instead of the absolute uh, corner name what we want to do is actually uh, just uh, insert some wild cards so we know that any point that we want to delete ends with tell so instead of giving it a specific floor uh, module name we just put in a star and delete like that so this should actually now delete eight points so let's take a look 52 44 uh, that should be eight yes we go to our floor you can see our floor our corner is now copied very nicely okay so now let's do that with the third floor so copy insert inside here so if it's everything is set up correctly we can just uh, move it to the f2 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 but we have to make sure that our floor height is actually uh, I think this is actually this is a tree so floor height is actually three so go ahead here make it a tree and and let's go to our wrangle and let's copy instead of two instead of one make it a two like that and let's make our box so we have a seven seven plus three this should be ten let's go ahead uh, okay well right we need to set up our floor as uh, second floor let's copy let's go to our building pattern let's get our floors so now we are going to put down a first floor inside the square brackets and in angle brackets we need to put the second floor so it keeps uh, generating them so you can see our second floor is here and if you go to our copied points also our uh, corner should be set up so that looks good and now let's put in our third floor I just copies and so that's going to be a third so f3 3 3 and let's take a look at what the height of these are actually so height of these are also going to be 3 so okay so so 3 is fine and let's copy this let's go to our uh, pattern now let's put in the second floor inside square brackets and the third is going to be inside our angle brackets like that and then we went to, to our box add uh, three that's going to be 13 and we have to also do this it's three and three corner okay so this should work and it actually works really nicely now we have basically set up our walls you can see now it's we have to work with uh, get our roof done so okay let's get start working on that and one thing i actually forgot to do is actually we have to put our trim so if you go to our bridge and go to the reference you can see uh, there's a trim uh, trim on the very uh, on the third floor so let's go ahead and export our trim so here it is and we're going to have to actually work with it a little bit differently because of a uh, because the stream is actually going to have to be a little bit of a basically it has to be on top of this extrusion on the third floor so it's actually you're gonna have to do it uh, process a little bit differently so so let me go ahead and get this set up so let's take a look at it this is our trim kit let's go inside select this i'm going to import 
let's take a look at them okay so let's split them so we have a small piece a large one and the convex and con uh, so convex and concave piece and the large one so let's start by giving it some names so i'm going to call this uh trim i'm just going to give it a zero so trim corner convex concave and it's going to be our trim and just just with the instead of zero one so we have basically two straight pieces with different indexes now if we have our name section now we want to also get our temporary and delete pieces so you can notice that actually these corner pieces are actually a little bit bigger ones because they are meant to be uh, basically they are meant to be bigger than the since this has to actually extrude this it has to basically be placed on a edge of this one so that's why the corner piece is a little bit bigger one but we can still use this one as our reference so i'm going to just copy this two times and actually one thing i did wrong i actually uh, copied the blast node for every one of these uh, temporary delete and uh, delete and, and temporary pieces you can actually just uh, with houdini you can basically just uh, draw out another uh, another create attribute name uh, create attribute node so that's going to be trim uh, so let's call it trim corner temp and trim corner delete so this should be in line with our naming for everyone everything else so now let's match it all together let's make this ideally we would actually have pre-processed our geometry but these names are a little bit too long but that's okay so now we have set it up now what we we'll do is actually go ahead and copy our uh, for each block and we are actually going to do a uh, different we're basically going to use the match node and going to offset this geometry so go back to our uh, trim copy it inside here and should it should basically work the same because but we want to basically offset our geometry but let's just see how it's going to look uh, by default so we have here and we can actually merge them inside here so let me move this so we have basically done the same thing let's create our uh, trim let's merge them together and let's give it a let's call it a trim so so about the corners you want our corners actually let me un, undo this so i need i know that it's a it's a trim corner so that's going to be delete and it's going to be i'm just going to copy this it's going to be temp and the uh, and the middle one is going to be our trim remember that our trim was uh, the long piece was with the one index so i'm just going to copy this one our trim and let's go to our pattern and let's our floor is now going to be in squares and our trim is going to be in a angle like that and now let's make our so we know that also uh we have to set up our module building height so i know that the trim is a zero it's a half a meter long so 0 0.5 so let's go to our uh, box and increase it by 0 0.5 like that and our trim should appear and you can see uh, it's basically intersecting so what we can do is these are little pieces we want to basically do the same thing as with our angle so let's go ahead and go to our angle and copy this and let's change it to the our so if the corner
trim corner uh, temp we want to uh, repl replace it with trim corner trim corner uh, convex and for this to work we actually have to uh, for our copy to points right now we actually are not receiving all the data of the points because this is still connected to only the one for each loop so delete this connection actually uh, connect it to the merge one like that and if it's done right our pieces should be inside here you can see and you can and there is one problem it is with this one and this is where our uh, offset of the match size works so go to the to the trim for each loop go to the match size and in match size what we do is uh, justify by x you have to put it at, at the max put it at the max and we want to offset it by so if you start to move this offset on positive direction you can see our trim is actually getting extruded and at some point it's actually it's going to align perfectly with our trim our trim is going to align perfectly so just offset, offset x by max and that's it our trim should be working now we can go ahead to copy let's go to our box let's increase it you can see it should always work so that's that we have completed our trim and now let's work on our roof so let's go to our reference and let's take a look at it you can see in reference the roof is actually kind of consistent of four different parts so we have a uh, the longest part which is the window side of the roof this the shortest part where the, there's a gable and then the roof is the actual roof on top of it is actually consisted of two parts so there's a flat roof over here and then there's also the angled ones we can do it as a four part roof so we have to make sure that all of these four parts are going to work with each other so let's go ahead and let's start working on it so what i'm going to do is drag out a dot from our uh, reference uh, block out geometry and i always want to make sure that our roof is actually uh, on top of our uh, trim so i want to create a new geometry always that's always going to sit on top of this uh, box so i'm going to put down a null let's put in the roof face now let's put down the group node And we want to select by uh, normal so go ahead and disable this uh, base group make sure that group type is primitive i'm going to call it roof base and i'm going to go ahead and e enable key by normal and also make sure that i make a uh, normal direction a uh, positive y axis and spread angle is going to be zero and they should make sure that uh, we always select a single polygon from this uh, box and the only polygon that looks at a positive y-axis is our uh, top polygon like that now put down a blast node let's delete everything except for our roof, roof base make sure it's at primitives like that and now put down extrude and our stu i looked up the reference it's 3.5 meters long should be roof so that's that and also extrude the back also like that so you can see and our roof base actually uh, inheriting the group bottom and left one so that's good now what we'll do is uh, split it so now we want to only work on the so roof base want to work on only the side polygons so uh, you're going to split uh, by by the group and everything that's not on the not top or bottom polygon is going to be our side so i'm going to work on them so i'm going to put down an all node on both sides so uh, roof top bottom and uh, let's put call it roof sides like that so now i want to put down a measure node measure top and i want to measure them 
and whenever the the uh, I want to measure the area I want to measure per uh, per element let's take a look at our uh, primitive and it actually should uh, create a area uh, area attribute and you can see the areas are basically only two areas because there's uh, two different uh, sizes of polygons and what I will do is basically going to rearrange them to the 0 to 1 uh, 0 to 1 uh, range which you can do is go ahead bake visualize range into output and I want to uh, uh, remap range because if you disable you actually uh, can't you can see and in remap, remap range it's automatically going to be 0 and 1 and since we have only two values it's basically going to always the the gable side always going to be 0 and the window side is always going to be 1 so this is how we can procedurally always tell which side is which so that's good and for the group let's put in a groups so that we can easily uh, reference them so i'm going to call them uh, uh, roof poly uh, let's uh, let's call it the roof sides uh, base group at area equals so the roof should be one like that and copy it and gable side it's going to be equals zero like that and that's our roof gable side so let's take a look at it so it's your gable side and the roof side like that and now what i do is uh, uh, merge these together back because this is going to be our geometry and after the merge uh, make sure that you actually uh, fuse them together also like that okay so this is our group setup now let's merge more geometry so i'm going to start with the windows so i went ahead and imported windows and for the for the roof windows uh, side there's only two uh, geometry pieces which is the window and this uh, shorter piece on the sides so i gave them names i merged them together and now i'm just going to go ahead and connect them to our main merge that's going to uh, let's do this like that to our main merge so that it is available so first of all let's go ahead and let's copy this this roof description because I want uh, I'm going to call it windows uh, actually roof windows and I want to describe our new uh, new floor so all I want to do is uh, give our uh, roofs uh, our high roofs uh, on the middle and on the sides uh, the uh, wall let's go ahead and create this pattern so this is very simple pattern and then the then the walls are going to be on the sides because we're actually going to delete them too like that and the roof the the roof height if i remember is 3.5 so this should uh, work fine so let's uh, let's put down the merge because we're going to have a for the roofs we're going to have a four different uh, floor descriptions and let's put down the building uh, building from the pattern node so just copy it let's move this over here somewhere so we have our geometry so connect to our geometry and we want to get the merge so we want to merge our floor description with our main uh, processing of uh, all the all the modules that it gives out which is in here so put down a merge like that and then we can connect it to our patterns like here so let's get our floors and it should get our uh, 
our uh, roof windows and uh, let's just put it down inside angle brackets like that and if we have done it correctly it should appear like that you can see there are these pieces which actually we're going to delete because uh, well we'll see but now what to do is actually uh, make sure that we uh, we do not uh, spawn anything at the gables which were the uh, well, third input will come in play which is called the cutout geometry put down the box uh, let's make it a little bit bigger let's go ahead and intersect it with our pattern and connect it like that you can see wherever our uh, block out geometry intersects with our pattern with our uh, cutout geometry you can see the pattern is not created so this is exactly what we want we just always want to procedurally uh, make sure that our uh, cutout geometry intersects at the sides at the shortest sides of our uh, windows so let's do that so it is actually where our uh, group setup uh, comes in let's go ahead and connect this uh, our block out geometry also to our cutout you can see uh, if the geometry is exactly the same it's actually not going to render anything so let's make our uh, let's have our let's make our uh, cut our geometry a little bit smaller put down the transform and before we do that make sure that our uh, pivot is always at the center of the geometry so go to the pivot transform and we can change the pivot transform it i'm just going to use and i want to buy uh, tools and just put down these uh, expressions like that so this will make sure that this is always at the center of it and we just want to scale uh, on the x and on the x and uh, z axis smaller so put down uh, something like 0 0.99 and on the y axis make it a little bit bigger to make sure that it's always intersects uh, our basically that it's always uh, actually probably we do not even have to uh, touch the y axis so you can see it works like that now and make now let's put down the poly extrude and what we do is extrude only the gable side so we have our groups i put down the gable sides and you can extrude it so i'm just going to extrude it maybe something like a something big maybe like a five because you want to make sure that it's always intersects with the uh, uh, with the cable side and you can take a look at it you can see we have successfully uh, deleted our uh, cable uh, cable side windows like that and one thing before we set up our cable i actually want to rename my uh, my windows roof window side because i actually called it a roof side let's call it a window side something like this so for our gables we just have to invert this extrude so copy this pattern uh, the cutout geometry copy also this one and for the plug extrude instead of gable side we want to extrude window side like that uh, connect it to the cutout like that and these two can actually be the same so let's take a look at our gable so where did i put them so this is my window sides so this is gables so for the gables I did a little bit of modifying because uh, by default it comes only with three pieces which actually with the four one and there's actually uh, since for our reference we need our left and uh, right side of the gable so that's why I basically uh, took the side the angled uh, roof and mirrored it and this is going to be called the uh, gable left end and the right end like that so yeah so i just mirrored it and now there's two pieces and then this then just connect it to merge and let's create our pattern so let's go to the roof copy it connect it let's call it the cable and the pattern is going to be the same except for the so the the middle is going to be cable and for the so cable so this is going to be a uh, left end and then the right end is going to be 
actually I probably uh, uh, let's take a look at how it actually looks so inside here so do you want all your windows let's get our pattern cable paid inside okay so actually uh, I need to switch around my pattern so the right one is going to be actually on the left and left one is going to be on the right like that okay so that's good now to visualize them we can just uh, template both of these geometry like that so this is our roof right now for the angled roof let's take a look at these uh, modules so we have a flat uh, roof with a uh, with no chimney uh, the roof with chimney and uh, a small piece is going to be at the side so give them name let's connect it to uh, actually we are not going to connect it to our main uh, for each loop because we're going to use the uh, windows uh, roof windows uh, these uh, the same setup except we're going to offset we need to offset them uh, basically the, we're going to use the same block out geometry and we are just going to offset them so copy this for each loop my bad let's connect it inside here so let's just put it here connect it and then connect it to this merge and now let's create our floor i'm just going to copy one of these uh, floor descriptions uh, connect it and let's describe it so all i have to do is uh, save this name so i'm going to put the sides uh, I want to make sure that also the small pieces are always on the sides because we're going to actually delete them and these we can create whatever the pattern wants so I'm just going to go ahead and create our pattern so so with this, if it's in square it's going to be roof angle 2 let's copy two times and between it, between it roof angle let's put it uh, to one that's going to be actually a chimney let's go to roof angle and now let's uh, copy this uh, building from pattern so we want to copy this uh, windows and only thing that we want to do let's get our floors let's get our roof angle paste inside here and that's it we have copied it and now what we need to do is make sure that we actually align this geometry so template our uh, roof windows and make sure that you have display flag on our uh, new copied angled uh, roof go to the match size that we just uh, this this is exactly the reason why we created this zip this uh, for each loop because we want to actually offset this geometry so what i'm going to do is go to the for each loop and go to the i'm going to put it on max now I want to basically offset this geometry on the X and Y axis to make sure that it's aligned at, at top of our uh, roof windows. Uh, win roof windows, yeah. So, with a little bit of a looking at what the, uh, uh, what's the correct amount, something like 0 point negative negative 0 0.5 and 3.5 on the positive axis should do our trick basically just going to align this geometry so you can see we can actually probably uh, increase our uh, decrease our x-axis too maybe something like this so okay so this should make sure that our roof is always correctly laid out now that we have our three main pieces ready what we want to do is actually clean up all of this so first of all we want to uh, create our points and then copy them to just like inside here because we actually want to uh, delete some of these points because if we let's say merge them together right now you can see there are some ugly intersections inside here so you can see uh, the roof and window parts are actually intersecting with the gable because the gable is actually extending inside the inside the roof so let's go ahead and create some null nodes let's just rename them so uh, 
roof angle uh, roof windows and cable so after that what we do is uh, delete uh, the side uh, the sides the sides of it so put on the blast and i know that uh, the small pieces are named uh, roof angle 2 so go inside here make sure it's points at module uh, module name equals roof angle 2 like that and make sure that you the uh, do not select delete uh, non-selected so deleted these now let's uh, copy this and this is going to be called roof i wall is zero so let's take a look at it it deleted very nicely so we can merge these together already so this week maybe let's merge them and let's put down the copy to points So let's copy uh, target points in this and for this uh, let's put all the this merge other copy points like that. Also make sure that you uh, this attribute is going to be a module name like that and if it's correctly done we have uh, uh, created the same thing only from the copy to points and without this uh, without the point that actually intersected but there is one more problem which is the alignment problem because our gable is now L is not aligned with the with the uh, with the uh, longest side so what we do is uh, fix that so let's take a look at how can we do that let's go to our uh, building from pattern known where we create our gables and all I want to do is actually give it a little bit of a, a wider uh, geometry than it is right now so uh, connect the poly extrude right before the it goes to the block out geometry and what we're going to do is actually extrude the window sides of this geometry because if you take a look at it so it's not, it's not going to work because actually we have to uh, the building nodes doesn't really like the if there are any edges on this geometry like poly loops or whatever so put down a uh, dis dissolve uh, uh, flat edges so make sure that there are no edge loops inside this geometry uh, that you feed to the building uh, geomet building node but if you make these and you start extruding the window sides you can see uh, that our gables also become uh, becoming wider Let's put something like 0 0.1 like that if you go to the copy the points you can see we are now a little bit uh, too much of extrusion uh, so go back and i found that 0 0.085 works the best and this should make sure that our roof is always aligned like that and if you so it is a good benchmark for you to align a uh, gable with the windows before with this make sure that it's plush and then you can also align your roof inside here uh, with the match size node which is going to be alignment i changed these values a little bit because it wasn't quite at the same height but once you have set it up uh, with the match match size and this extrude uh, it should always uh, which this is the only thing that we have to do like a manually set up should always now be uh, aligned correctly for the flat roofs we want to make sure if we want to use uh, point information of our windows and from of our, our gables we want to uh, get the correct number of points from both of these output points and we just want then to multiply them with because if you take a look at this one so we have one two three four five six we have six, six windows and so that means we should have a six uh, six columns of uh, of roof and let's take a look at the cables so uh, since we have a on the angle side there's always there's a roof by default 
that means we have to only two rows of uh, two uh, two rows of flat roof. So I went to procedurally get this information and create these roofs, these flat roofs. So I am going to start by this blast node, uh, pulling down a, a group node, and I want, actually want to just uh, get one side of this roof. So if you take a look at this. Uh, uh, let's take a look at normals and point number you can see the one uh, these roofs should always have a uh, it's not going to interchanging its numbers you can see it's gradually becoming bigger five and then the other row is, is from the sixth so we can use this to our advantage and create a let's call it a roof one side and in the base group, make sure that it at point zero two, and then we can use a uh, expression endpoints. And the endpoints we have to give it a a zero, which is basically just a number of points inside this geometry, which we know is a uh, so inside here we have 12, 12 points. And then we want to select just half of them, so delete, uh, divide it by two, like that. So let's take a look at this group inside here. You can see, so it's always going to select one more than we needed because the twelve divided by uh, by by two is going to be six. But since our point starts with zero, we actually have to uh, subtract uh, one from it, like that. And now this, we make sure that we always select one side of our of our uh, uh, roof, uh, our windows of the roof. And for the gables, we can use the same thing. Just copy it, connect it. Let's just call it, call it a gable one side. So we can put in a blast. We want to delete uh, the other, basically the group that's not this. So delete that and for our gables actually have to also because our for uh, for our roof uh, there's already a roof on the one side of them like here so for our gable points we have already a, a, po a roof for the uh, first and the last point so i want to make sure that we do not create a new roof for them uh, extra roof so go ahead and delete the first and last points from our uh, gable points put in a put in a blast so what you can do is first of all let's uh, let's blast uh, uh, from gables the same thing let's get only one side of the cable and in the blast what you can do is uh, so we know that our first point is always going to be zero and the second point is going to also, also uh, going to be the last one so what you can do is uh, end points zero and that's a, a negative one like that so and select uh, deselect delete unselected like that so this should always make sure that we delete the first and last point and now let's create a wrangle node connect the windows and the gable at the second input so let me go ahead and edit so what I want to do is first of all First, we want to get the number of gable side, uh, how many points there are on gable side of the roof. So, put out an integer. I just can call gable pt num. It's going to be n points. And the geometry is going to be one like that. And now I want to run a for each loop. A for loop actually uh, so for the integer y is going to be our point number and the count is going to be gable pt num like that so basically for every point make sure that you're running our points we run over every uh, this uh, every gable point inside here we want to get a couple of attributes from our uh, gable points so that's you have to create a couple of variables so let's put on the vector i'm going to call it a uh, gable pt position it's going to be a point so i want to get the position of the uh, gable uh, point and as a point number put in an i 
So for dax you want to get the uh, gable scale, put down vector, gable scale is going to be the point, it's called scale and point number is also one. The gable scale is very important because these uh, modules that actually are being copied from the building from pattern nodes can uh, stretch out for our instances are they are stretching out to fill the all the walls so make sure you get you want to get the correct scale also for our flat uh, roof so that's that and let's initialize a couple of uh, variables uh, let's create a float let's call it a new pt and integer value of the actually the float is going to be a, let's call it the offset and integer new pt is going to be our new points that we are going to create so we are initializing them right now because we are actually going to give them values in a for a, in a if statements and these wrangles doesn't like when we introduce uh, new variables inside them so make sure we initialize them outside and is an if statement you're going to use an if v at 10 our normal x-axis equals zero so i'm going to uh, just uh, go ahead and write it out and actually it's going to be a lot easier once we have written out a little bit of this code to see what's actually going on so now inside this if statement we want to create our offset value and our offset is going to be uh, our gable position x-axis just copy it dot x like that now i want to get our new point our new pt is going to be add point so this is going to be zero and the point number is going to be a vector so we want to give a new point our position so we're going to use an offset of this inside our set and we're going to be using the same y as a our current point which is v dot p dot y and v at p dot z like that and close it down and you can see we have created these points that are uh, used by that are created along this uh, basically with our offset these points are exactly where we want them uh, for our roof to be so that's good and now let's actually go ahead and for us to see the result of our roof uh, let's give this uh, roof these roof points also our uh, our uh, flat roof module name so set point attrib zero name is uh, so module name the point number is the new pt and the value is going to be uh, uh, it's called for i gave it a roof flat zero like that mode we can skip like that we also want to give scale for our uh, point so Let's put in a set point attrib. So it can be zero. So scale. So that's going to be new PT. And I'm just going to give it a set for now, just one, uh, one, one, so that it initializes with the scale. So that's good. And let's connect this to our merge, like here, and make sure that's your module, which is uh, this flat roof. That want to use let's go ahead and connect it to the main merge like that and if you go to copy the points we should get our roof on top of it like that but obviously there's a problem with it the scale is wrong and also they are not uh, they are not uh, basically uh, connecting with each other so this is where the scale comes in let's go back to our angle uh, let me actually uh, increase the font of this like here maybe something like this what i do is actually uh, one typo i did is actually i uh, for our gable scale i reference the geometry zero which actually we have to reference one because our gable is that incoming from our uh, to our second input so but what i do is copy this gable scale and we want to give the z axis of our gable scale over new points x-axis like that and we take a look at our copied points right now and you can see 
now this is actually stretched out uh, to match the to match the uh, x axis of this so if you think about it let's go to our cables gable points you can see the scale attribute is somewhere inside here you can see the scale from x and y is one and one but the for the uh, for the z is actually increased because the because of these uh, these two modules actually being stretched out to meet at the middle so that's why we want to get also this information and put it on the x-axis for our points to also meet together like that so that's that and want to also give it a uh, give the z-axis and uh, this the z-axis also of our window module so let's go to our angle and we can just go to the v at uh, scale dot z-axis of our module uh, give it as a z of this uh, our new flat window flat roof points if you go to our copied points disable enable it you can see it now should cover all of it and if you're lucky there shouldn't have really be any uh, uh, any intersections like that and one thing that we should do is actually go ahead and delete the initial points that we actually are running over inside the wrangle now put down a blast node and there should be a group already from our top network that's roof one side and we should dele delete uh, that group points because we are with the wrangle we are actually creating these points giving a module name and actually we are also get uh, creating duplicates of uh, our roof windows so make sure that you delete them before you merge these together like that and for us to actually uh, align this let's actually do this like that so let's copy this copy to points let's disconnect it so the let's not actually disconnect it all the way so instead of the points let's create another one so let's get geometry that's all only the points like that and and for us to move this uh the, the, let's uh, delete this one put down a match size so what to do is uh, after we have copied the geometry uh, put it to the geometry that we need to move or resize and this merge is going to be actually our bounding box like that and in, inside here we want to uh, put it at the we want to put it at the center and the x and z is at the center and the y we can offset it and let's take a look at it and let's take a look at the uh, let's template our rest of the roof and this let's go to the top of it you can see it should always align at the center of it and all we have to do is uh, create an offset to it let's go ahead just to make sure that it's flush with the rest of it let's take a look at it so it should always work like this so one thing that we need to still do is to make sure that it works it works on both uh, axes because right now it's actually would be uh, it's actually going to be broken once we because we only uh, in our wrangle we only took care of one axis once we uh, basically when the x-axis uh, equals with zero but what happens when our uh, longest side is on the other side it's going to be broken let's take a look at how it actually would look so let's template these two let's go to our box and let's uh, move it to the other side uh, like this you see it now it's a uh, our wrinkle doesn't take care of the other uh, option which is if the if the x is on the if the x is uh, normal is the negative so let's go ahead and it's really not that bad all you have to do is uh, copy all of this what we created and put it in an else statement and in the else statement so let's copy this all we have to do is uh, change a couple of these uh, axes so instead of gable position x we want to get cable position z and and the point position is going to be uh, not offset it's going to be actually a z copy offset put it in a z like that and the offset x is going to be v at v dot x like that 
and one thing that you will notice that is there are these gaps between the uh, panels and that's because our orient attribute is not set up so let's go back to wrangle and the orient attribute is also a special attribute that is being picked up by our copy to points which as it as it sounds uh, as its name it uh, takes care of orientation of our uh, panels so you want to give the same orientation as our uh, points that we are actually running over because this all of these points already have a orient attribute which is from our building from pattern node so all we have to do is give it the same uh, pattern the same orientation so set point attribute zero Co uh, orient uh, so new pt and all we have to do is set uh, orient like that copy it and paste also in other ones like that and that should take care of our uh, gaps between our windows like that you can see now there are no gaps between it if you take a look at all of it our building it should work right now let's go to our uh, box move it around like that we should get our building always very nice and set up with the uh, with the roof correctly like that if we want to make our build building higher we have to adjust our pattern inside the main uh, building from basically anything uh, besides the roof of the pattern because right now we are ending our the only thing that is repeating is our trim so let's go with to the box and if we're going to start increase it you will see we are actually increasing our trim and this is not what we want to do so go to pattern and put the trim inside the square brackets and in angle brackets we can put in either first or second floor because we don't want to use a third floor because the third floor uh, has the trim the, it is, is beginning of the trim and the ground floor has the doors so we do not want to use these but what you can do is uh, just uh, combine the first and second floor inside angle brackets with a hyphen between them. So this is going to give us the first and second floor interchangeably like that. You can see now we are getting, uh, so let's go to very end of it like that. If you want our building higher, we can just go ahead and adjust our box. So let's say 30 meters like that. You can see it's always should be working and for us to see the building with all the materials what i did i created hda from all of this network and i actually going to send it to the unreal but, but before i send it i have to set it up so that the materials are actually automatically picked up so create an hda from all of this network go to the all of the imports of the geometry imports and freeze them once you have frozen all of the imports from the uh, from the uh, files, basically these are just a. Uh, if we how we if we unfreeze it, it's going to take it from our uh, file location. But if we, if we freeze this geometry, it's actually going to be stored inside the HDA itself. And this is what we want for us that so that our uh, building actually is getting uh, picked up inside HDA in Unreal without using the Unreal instance attribute. And once you have frozen, we want to give it the Unreal Material attribute. So this is going to be the path to the material inside Unreal Engine to use for these uh, buildings. So this is good. This is uh, pretty handy because most of these that we have actually imported are the are the we can use the same material on uh, multiple pieces of geometry. So it's going to cut down on pasting as our Unreal Material uh, primitive attribute inside here. So once you have set it up inside here, you can import it inside Unreal. And if you take a look at it, it should automatically pick up all the geometry, uh, all the geometry uh, materials inside here. And one thing that you can do to make it a little bit easier for you to uh, reference materials is to, I'm going to show it inside here. Let's say we have our first floor kit, copy uh, reference to it go to back to go back to uh, houdini go find our first floor 
so I already uh, added this so what we do is actually uh, delete this and that's actually if you download my tools there's actually a paste unreal uh, material button paste it press it and it should automatically paste it from your clipboard uh, whatever you copied inside the uh, string attribute of the create attribute uh, node and it should also automatically create unreal material uh, name on it and then you can just select all these and connect inside here so this is a little bit faster way if you want to reference materials inside so reference materials that are going to actually be picked up inside unreal that's it for this tutorial hope you learned something new in it and see you next time